Perfect. Thank you, Tamar, for the warm introduction. Uh, this is definitely an unknown for me just walking into it. This is actually my very first time at Odd Salon. Very excited. First time here, first time speaking. I uh, feel very welcome. So the reason I feel very comfortable even talking about the unknown X is this is actually a fusion of my own life. I definitely always have loved math. It's been something I've been amazing at since I was a little kid. I won awards in the county of Sacramento, the state of California. Growing up, I did geometry when I was in sixth grade, uh, multivariable calculus in high school. This was just always a love for me. But also, the other weird love that I always had was the unknown itself. Um, I spent a lot of time in middle school, especially, reading weird books about the paranormal, aliens, Mothman, uh, everything I could get my hands on. So as you could imagine, I was a pretty cool kid. <laughs> so why are we even talking about X? Why is X a representation in math at all? So first, there's a little contention here, but a lot of people say this may come from the uh, Arabic word al-shalan, which is the unknown thing. Makes sense, but we really didn't start using X in math until this beautiful man here, Rene Descartes, uh, came up and just started using it in math as just an unknown variable. A lot of people think this is just an end of the alphabet kind of thing. Whatever it was, it stuck because he started using it. But this is what we think of when we think of X. Everybody here in this audience, I'm sure, X is a horizontal, Y is a vertical, maybe there's a Z that's kind of a depth, but we think X is just being like this thing on a plane that exists. And I wanna break that from all of you right now. No more. Because X is actually just a concept. It's a representation of just an unknown variable. So it could be uh, an N, it could be a question, it could be a lambda, it could be an A, a light bulb emoji. All of these things are the same representations of what X actually means. It's just an unknown thing. But we see X all the time in pop culture too. This is not something we're unfamiliar with. We have The X-Files, one of my favorite shows growing up. Shout out to Agent Scully. <laughs> and we have the concept as well as in exploring. You have kind of X marks a spot. What's uh, the buried treasure going to be? Is it gold? Is it bones from the deceased? A lot of unknowns there. But even more fun things too, like the unknown chemical X, which of course turned three brave young girls into crime-fighting, monkey-fighting superheroes known as the Powerpuff Girls. So we're not unfamiliar with what X is at all, but I'm going to quiz you a little bit and bear with me. I promise this isn't going to be a quiz show in the end. So using your arm, what does X equals zero mean? Not a lot of good people at math here. X equals zero is just a vertical straight up, right? So the representation could simply be something like a prime meridian. And this is where I want to pause for a second because any math nerds out in the audience are like, that's a sphere. That's not really how we think about X equals zero. Shut up for now, please. <laughs> but we even have more complex functions. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Too far. We're just going to go right back through this again. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. That's really why I backed up here. Give the audience a chance to really understand what's going on. Okay, we found it. So this is a little crazier. Some of us know the concept of E. But this is actually a shape we all know of as well. And x being the variable here, we just plug in, it in a bunch of places. And what we end up with is a shape we all know, the St. Louis arch here. So it looks a little scary from the outset. But honestly, you just plug in some x. You get to graph what it looks like. It's pretty easy to understand. But let's look at something a little bit more complex. I'm sorry, once again, this is not a math quiz in the end. but. So this looks scary. 
what is this representation? There's a lot of weird notation here that is actually my own. Again, math nerds, please hold your criticism here. But what does this represent at the end of the day? It does, the ships is a good answer, but it's not ships. <laughs> it's obviously taco night. Like math is everywhere around us and we can use it to express everything. So let's break this down for a second. If I just fill in the unknown X's here, this becomes pretty easy to understand what it's talking about here. Myself, I love cheese in terms of handfuls, so that's why I use that one. But in the end, this is simply a taco. But let's get more complicated here. So we have some variables that we can plug in, figure out what it's talking about, but what happens when almost everything here is unknown? And one common question I asked myself when I was a kid, is there a monster under my bed? I was reading about all these things, I was scared of the dark, and I wanted a way to kind of logic myself through this. So, let's set some variables. Simple, x is the probability that a monster is there, y is the probability that a monster is not there. What does this mean? So when we think of probabilities, we tend to think of it in terms of like dice rolls. You have a six-sided dice, so there's a one in six chance for every option to come up. But that's not really how probabilities work in real life. We know that's not a 50-50 chance that there's a monster under the bed. So we can kind of readjust this a little bit. Move it over. This is a little bit more represent representative of what's actually going on here. And we know this through, uh, especially me as a kid, none of my friends had been eaten by monsters. I had never seen a monster. None of my friends had reported seeing a monster. So chances were it's kind of low. But we can use this on a really big scale too. So the Drake equation of science fame. This is the probability that there, we will communicate with intelligent life out in the universe. So what this does is just breaks things down into small little compartments. Um, how many different suns are there? How many are producing uh, planets? How many of those planets produce an ecosystem? How many of those ecosystems produce life? And you can get down in uh, further more granular to really start estimating what these concepts mean. So if you can think of it maybe as a one in 10 million chance that intelligent life will actually come up, we can understand that this probability is pretty low. So we can use some estimations with these probabilities to start filling in some gaps. But let's do some practical exercises. So instead of talking about aliens, let's talk about something that we all probably know a little bit more. Do I need to ch change my son's diaper? How would we go about this using math? And it's really just about variables. What could indicate that we need to change our son's diaper? So smell, if the smell is really high, we have a good probability of uh, needing to change our diaper. If it's been a long time since the last change, indications are they're definitely gonna need a diaper and that'll go to one the longer the, that time goes out. But let's do even more practical things. I can't be late for work tomorrow. What do I need to identify as my variables that may impact getting a flat tire on the way? So you get things like tire pressure, whether there's construction on the way, uh, your attention in the morning because you're tired, when was the last time you even changed your tires. This is a little bit more practical. But getting a little bit more abstract now, how much me time do I need? And I promise this isn't sexual, so please don't take it in that direction. So things like sleep come up, nutrition, personality type, which may actually be a fixed variable, introvert versus extrovert. And even more complex now, will I ever find love? We can use this to apply everything. So how many strangers do I meet in my daily life? How picky am I? What is my confidence? Am I attractive? What's my compatibility? Do I get along with people? And you can kind of break these down to start thinking, how do I build up my confidence? How do I make myself more compatible? So you can start filling in and estimating when you will find love on an estimation, of course. But then the final question, I always use these kind of devices to figure out my own life. But this was always a weird one for me. Who am I? 
And I always just got a question mark for this. And it really sat with me for a long time of, for me personally, who we are is about where we find happiness, what makes us happy. And I kind of went through the motions on that, okay? I've been very lucky in like relationships in my life. Um, sh <laughs> ships, I don't think so. I've found a lot of love in like my family, my personal relationships with friends. Uh, I've seen a lot of success in my professional life, reaching heights that I never thought I would get. Had the means to travel and have the things that are kind of creature comforts for me. But it was still not solved. I never felt really comfortable with who I was. So for finding my own ex here, I love this image just because it's very poignant of how easy a lot of this is. Yes, we need to actually figure out what this value is, but even identifying what it's even talking about, what it's describing, that unknown X, is very, very important. So here we have X being, of course, a hypotenuse in a triangle. Makes sense. And my own unknown X in this was staring at me right in the mirror. So I was a lot like this dude. Waking up every morning, there's a cuddly cat with me. You should be happy, but you're still kind of like, what the hell is going on? Really not fully comfortable. And I came to realize that actually my unknown ex was literally just who I was. I didn't like looking in the mirror, and I ended up finding that it was actually my gender identity. And this is actually a picture of me 15 months ago, uh, about two months before I started my transition. And since then, for finding my own ex, I have actually found happiness. I feel comfortable in my own body, and it really allows me, uh, has allowed me to find somebody that not only treats me the way that I've wanted to be treated, but also uh, makes me feel like the person that I've always felt. So let's raise a glass to finding ourselves, using math and logic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Taylor. Woohoo! All right, so that is our first half. We're going to have intermission in just a few minutes. There's a few things I want to tell you. One of them, and as you can see on the slide behind me, is that we are building an Adventure Harvey map. So you, if you have an Adventure Harvey and you take him on adventures and you take pictures, hashtag Adventure Harvey, we will find it. If you don't have a Harvey, you can go to the merch table and get yourself a Harvey. There are two left, I'm being told, over there. Oh, my goodness. So you can t get a Harvey, get your travel buddy, um, and take him traveling. Whoops. That didn't end. Okay. There we go. Sorry for all those blank ones. Since our last salon, Harvey has been to the Globe Theater in England. He has visited some geysers. These are the ones in California. He went to a whiskey distillery. Uh-huh. And he went to Iceland. Yeah. So we rely on your support for this whole crazy thing. The way we uh, keep it going is through your uh, participation and your purchases at the merch table. During intermission uh, at the merch table, you can find t-shirts and hoodies. Do we have hoodies today? Yes, we have hoodies today. Adventure Harvey's um, made by Isolde, who's sitting at the merch table. There are buttons and stickers. There are um, advanced discount tickets for the next show. So you can get all sorts of things. Oh, now it's stuck again. We're having technological problems here. Steen, Steen is not here tonight. Can you believe it? I know. But Annetta's coming. It's stuck. It won't go anywhere. Oh, now it's going. See? Annetta showed it. She scared the computer. This is our themed Harvey for tonight. Void Harvey. And I, are, there, are there any left? There are none left. After intermission, we will be raffling this guy off. And so if you have not yet filled a raffle uh, ticket at the door or at the merch table, please do so. And you can take this guy home with you and have your own adventure buddy um, with you. We'll do the raffle after intermission. And we're going to take about a 15-minute intermission. 
grab a cocktail, grab a speaker, ask your questions. Anybody with one of these pins is a fellow and are available to talk to you guys and answer any questions you have. We'll see you in about 15. Thank you.